Good evening, good evening, good evening, my brothers and sisters. How are you doing this beautiful evening? Your brother Tony is in the house. Come on in and sit at the dinner table. We have some good nutritional food for the soul, for the, uh, your soul tonight. So come on in, come on in, take your seats, my brothers and sisters, and go ahead and invite some more brothers and sisters to this uh, live uh, broadcast. We're all at the dinner table. If this is your first time at the dinner table, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tony M. Tuma, and I speak on relationships. That's where I come from. I talk about relationships, and I primarily talk about relationship from a biblical point of view. When I say biblical, this is the position of where I come from. I strongly believe that God is the one that created the relationship. So, therefore, God can call the rules and the limitation and the boundaries of relationships. God is the one that created a relationship with a man first, and he had a unique relationship with the man. Secondly, God had a unique relationship with the woman. Thirdly, God represented the woman to the man. And in the presence of God, the man that uh, God created, Adam, he said in reference of Eve, bone my bone flesh of my flesh i should call a woman because she came from man that's the position that i come from and that's the position that i'm going to go to the grave or when the lord comes that's the position that i'm going to believe in now if you believe in any other type of relationship outside of what god words say you have what is called a free will god gave you a free will so you believe whatever you want to do but if you're at the dinner table tonight that's the position i come from biblical okay uh th how you doing, Sister Flo Harvey Martin? Uh, welcome to the dinner table. Come on in, my brothers and sisters. Uh, like I said, if this is your first time, you're going to enjoy this good uh, food for the soul, okay? So come on in, come on in. And I want you, brothers and sisters, if you have some comment at the dinner table, I would like for you to go ahead and say what you would like to say and share your thoughts with the other brothers and sisters that come in and sit at the dinner table as long as we're talking about the topic at the dinner table, okay? With that said, we are about to uh, talk about this one particular item that's on the menu. By the way, I'm on two uh, broadcasts. I'm on the tube and on the book, okay? I may make a comment to those that are on the tube, those of you that are on the book, you may not see the comment, but I'm gonna call out their names and say what they basically had written and vice versa, those of you on the tube, you may not see the ones that are on the book, but I will call out their name and tell you what they have written. It's called We Family here, okay? And at the end of this uh, dinner, we're going to have a small Q&A session. If you have anything, any question that you need to ask or any comments that you need to make, you can make it towards me and the other brothers and sisters, okay? Now, with that said, when you look at the menu for tonight, we're going to discuss what caused the woman to have a more difficult time in life and why her man must understand. Listen again very carefully and, and on what's on the menu for tonight. What caused the woman to have a more difficult time in life and why her man must understand? Now, what am I talking about? Uh, when I say her man, what man am I talking about? I'm talking about a man that have moved towards the engagement period of a woman. He see that woman as becoming his wife or he's already married to her. That's the type of man I'm talking about, okay? A man that knows how to be a serious man, a man that knows how to move forward to commitment and a man that is mindful and he see that woman as a wife. He doesn't see that woman as a girlfriend. He doesn't see that woman as a boo. He doesn't see that woman as someone that you see in the area now and then. He wants to go all the way with that woman. How you doing, Sister Tierra? Welcome to the dinner table, sister. Now, uh, we're about to bring at the, at the appetizer. When we go to the appetizer, it is written. Again, it is written in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. That 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel and as being hairs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. 
okay the position as i always say my brother and sister guard at knowledge of relationship between a man and a woman the right way his way as being engaged moving towards being married or being married that's guard position on relationship mankind they got a different position on relationship but we're going to do it god's way okay so when first peter he had written in chapter 3 verse 7 said likewise ye husband this is the position okay this is the position of a man it said husband okay and then it said the well with them according to knowledge a man has to know something to be able to live in a peaceful uh, environment with a woman he must have knowledge he must not have the knowledge of this world but he must have the knowledge that comes from the wisdom of god okay now giving honor to the wife that's not meaning that he put her up on a pedestal because uh the lord god uh is on the pedestal okay so he does not put the woman on a pedestal but she is the second most important thing in that man's life after his relationship with god as until the weaker vessel i'm going to get more into what the weaker vessel is as when we go into the main course of the menu okay and being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered i have said this before i'm going to say it again in the bible even say that any of you men out there if you decide to get in um uh, engaged to a woman and you decide to get married to her you you gonna you gonna caution right now if you can't do that woman right do not marry her because not only are you doing something towards that woman you're doing something towards yourself because when god bring a man and a woman together they become one but you see brother if you decide to marry a woman and you're not going to treat her how god wants you to treat her your prayers will be hindered notice did not say the woman the wife prayer will be him it said the man you know why i said the man because god put the man as the head of the relationship so the man had more responsibility as holding the relationship together than the woman yes the woman had responsibility and she's accountable but when god looked at the family structure in a relationship he primarily looked at that man first then the wife and then the children okay but it primarily the man that god hold accountable more so than the woman as you know my brother and sister if you're going to work for a company the ones that are higher up they have more responsibility than those that are subordinates to them so therefore if you remember i always say this in this from the bible that christ that uh god is the head of christ that means god the father christ is the head of man and man is the head of the woman and that reference to uh the relationship between a man and a woman not every man has dominion over a woman okay or he doesn't have the headship of a woman only time a man have headship of a woman is when that man say i do to that woman she said i do to him if it's girlfriends just seeing one another that woman is not bound by the laws of god to that man and vice versa that man is not bound to the laws of god if he's not married to that man so when a man get if you brothers out there if you decide to marry a woman this is serious business if you don't if you're not going to do it god way for your sake brother not only for the woman's sake but for your sake do not do it because god going to hold you more accountable in a relationship than uh the woman now both men and women when it comes to a relationship both have tribulations but the woman she had more of a difficult time in life and every wise man that select the woman must understand this in order for the relationship to grow and to be strong so that's why we're talking about at the dinner table tonight what caused the woman to have more difficulty a more difficult time in life and why the man must understand it's a re request and it's a commandment that the man must understand the woman but we'll talk about what type of woman we're going to get to that shortly now most men my brothers and most yes most men my brothers and sisters 
don't have this knowledge. And what knowledge am I about to expound, not explain to you? Most men do not have this knowledge. And I always say this, I always go to this scripture. What is the purpose of a woman? If you ask, I'm going to tell you something tonight, my sister, and some of my brothers. If you ask the average man, let me let, let's just do a test when you all get a time. Just keep this and test some of the men that you know you're some of your family members, sister and brother, or some of your co-workers. Ask me on this question. Why did God, what was the purpose why God created a woman for a man? Or why, or why did uh God create the man in, in reference to the woman? Now, most men, if they're gonna come up with a lot of things, and even some women may come up with something, how you doing? Uh, purpose uh, for passion. How you doing? Now, when we go to 1 Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 11, it is written that the man was not created for the woman, okay? No man was created for no woman. Let's get that straight. But the woman was created for the man. Does that mean that the woman was created for every man? No, she was not created for every man. She was created for a specific man. She was created for a godly man, not a worldly man, but a godly man. As a matter of fact, my brothers and sisters, the woman, she is the cherry on top of the pie when it comes to God's creation. Now, what do I mean the woman is the cherry on top of the pie when it comes to God's creation? If you read the book of Genesis, brother and sister, the woman was the last created being or thing that God created. You understand? She was the last, she was the cherry on top of the pie. When, a, when God created the woman, that was it. When he created the woman, he rested then. And he created a woman, not only for the man, but he created the woman to be a helpmeet for a man. Now, when he created the woman to be a helpmeet for a man, what does a helpmeet mean? That means that she's supposed to come along and the purpose that God gave to the man, she's supposed to come along and help that man. But some men do not understand that a woman was created for a specific man, a God man, and she's supposed to come and help that man with his purpose. But in order for the, uh, she to help, help the man with a purpose, a man needs to know what his purpose is that God created. Most men that you ask do not know their purpose in life. They really do not know. And the reason why most men do not know their purpose in life is because they don't have no relationship with God. So therefore, they don't know their purpose in life. Oh, thank you, uh, Purpose uh, for Passion. Yes, you're here at the dinner table tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in. Now, I'm going to go over about four words that you need. You yeah, about three or four words that you need to understand because I'm going to utilize these words or you will see me on, on an underlying way use these words. What is knowledge? Knowledge is defined as facts information, and skills acquired by a person through what? Experience and or education, the theory or practical understanding of a subject or theoretically or practice. And let me give you the word knowledge because some people get knowledge and wisdom mixed up. Knowledge is defined as facts. The man must have facts, information. He must have facts and he must have information and skill acquired. A man must have some type of skills through experience or education and, and uh, through practical understanding of a subject, okay? So when we look at this word knowledge, you need to have wisdom. A man needs to have wisdom to be able to apply knowledge, okay? And wisdom 
outside of what the dictionary said. Wisdom is the ability to see things from God's point of view, okay? So a man must see things from God's point of view with what we are talking about tonight at the dinner table. Then the next word is called honor. Honor is defined as high respect or great esteem. Honor. A man must honor his wife. And like it's, you know, uh, going back to 1 Peter chapter 3, 7, as it is written, likewise, your husband, dwell with them according to what? Knowledge. Giving honor to the wife. And what is honor? The word honor is defined as high respect and great esteem. After the Lord, a man, a woman that God brings into a man's life, she must be held in high respect. The man must respect her and he must hold her in great esteem. You understand? Only godly men possess this knowledge, not worldly men. Worldly men don't know what honor is to a woman. They think honor is putting a crown on a woman's head. That's not honor. That's a crown that is corruptible and it corrupts the way. He needs to give us something more. And he needs to, that's why men need to be able to know how to talk to their woman. Positive. If if you are in a if you are engaged to a woman or if you are married to a woman, the word, you got to be very selective of the words that come out of your mouth. When you talk to your woman, you have to say words that are going to lift her up all time, not sometime, all times, okay? You have to be very, you have to use empathy when you're talking to a woman and how you treat a woman. You have to treat that woman like she, outside the Lord, she's priceless. So that's how you have to view the woman as she's priceless. She doesn't have a price tag. If you have a good woman, she doesn't have a price tag. She's priceless because when the Lord brings the right woman into your life, she's priceless. That's why a man needs to understand some things about the woman and why. And he has to understand because women have a difficult time in life and we're going to get more into it, which leads to the woman is the weaker vessel. What does the Bible and this is the weaker vessel but is geared more towards a woman as her virtues of her gentleness leaves her vulnerable to abuse and in, in that sense. Going back to 1 Peter 3, 7, it say, likewise, you husband, the will with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. It said the weaker vessel. That doesn't mean that the woman is stupid, it doesn't mean that she's less intelligent than a man. It means that she is she is more gentle and it leads her to be more vulnerable to abuse. What type of abuse? Mental, emotional, and physical abuse. Because God put a man in a leadership role and, and men that are put in a leadership role, they're either going to do it God's way or the world way. And that's dangerous because some men that are put in a leadership role, they abuse their leadership role. So if they abuse their leadership role and they have a woman in their life, they can abuse the woman mentally, emotionally, and physically because she is the weaker vessel. And it's in, and let me tell you this, and here goes another word, deceived. The word deceived is defined, my brother and sister, as a person Call or call someone to believe something that is not true. Typically, in order to gain some type of personal advantage. Again, the word deceive is defined as a person that causes someone to believe something that is not true. Typically, in order to gain some type of personal advantage. Don't get me wrong with what I'm about to say. But a lot of men, but especially women, are most susceptible to get deceived on a man. I'm going to say that again. Don't take this the wrong way, sisters. But, and I got to back up to prove this, but a lot, a, a lot of men, but especially women, are most susceptible to get deceived on a man. 
Now, in a real sense, my brother and sister, before I, yeah, in a real sense, let me say this first before I say what I'm going to say. We're going to go to the book of Timothy, chapter 2, 11 through 14. Again, that's, uh, it is written in, in Timothy 2, 11, 14. Again, Timothy, that first, uh, Timothy 2, 11 through 14, it said, let the woman learn, it said, let me say, let the woman learn in silence and all subjection but i suffer not a woman to teach nor to observe authority over a man but to be silent for adam was first formed then eve and adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in the transgression you see what it say it said and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. In a real sense, if you look at it from a, 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 a per se objective way, a man could possibly be viewed as weaker than a woman. Why do I say that? He could possibly be viewed as weaker than a woman because the woman was deceived, not the man. Even though the woman was deceived and not the man, for example, Eve sinned first. Eve sinned first because she was deceived. But Adam sinned. You know why Adam sinned? Because he couldn't say no to his wife. So who is the weaker one? If the Bible said the woman was deceived, not the man. However, Adam was not deceived. But he listened to what his wife said. See, Adam was told something by God. But he chose to listen to his wife that was created than the creator. So in a sense, it could be viewed that Adam was weaker because he, he should have listened to what God said other than what the woman said. So in a spiritual sense, Adam could, could have been viewed as being weaker, which leads us to this. Now we're going to get to the nitty gritty, okay? Now this, now it's time for us to get to the main course, okay? And those of you that come to the dinner table, what caused the woman to have a more difficult time in life, and why her husband must understand? We're going to go to, which leads us to Genesis chapter three, one through nineteen. Genesis chapter three, one through nineteen. Genesis chapter three, one nineteen. And if you don't mind, my brother and sister, I'm going straight to the source tonight. And I'm going to read. And while I'm reading, I'm going to expound some things to you, okay? So I need for you to stay with me tonight, okay? I need for you to stay with me. We're going to chapter 3. We're going to start at 1 and 19. And here we go. It said, Now the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field which the Lord God has made. Now, the, the serpent, who was the serpent? None other than Satan himself. This is what Satan did. He entered into the body of a snake. Okay? Spirits, a lot of spirit enter into bodies, okay? All, especially though evil spirit, they look for a body to inhabit. Okay, that what they walk around looking for a body to inhabit. Okay, now there are certain there are some ways that spirits can materialize in body, especially angels. Okay, they can an uh, angel can uh is a spirit that can have a body. Okay, but now we're talking about the serpent, which is we know as Satan. And it say this, and he said unto the woman. Yea, have God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now, question: Why he did not go? Why he did not go to Adam? Why he didn't go to Adam? He studied Adam. He studied Eve. What was Satan's main objective? 
Satan's main object was bigger than Adam and Eve, okay? Some of us think, some of us were thinking, and a long time I was thinking that it was a thing that he would just want to get mess up Adam and Eve. No, 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 no. Satan had a bigger purpose. His bigger purpose was directed at God himself. That was uh, Satan's biggest thing. It was to corrupt what God had created. So he studied Adam and Eve. You know what the Bible said about Satan? It said he, he walked around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. Again, the Bible clearly says Satan walked around like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. So that means that he was studying Adam and Eve. He knew what God told Adam. And more than likely, Adam told Eve what God had said. In some kind of way, Satan had his ear closed to the conversation. So he lo was looking for an opportunity. So this is what happened. Yea, have God said, you shall not eat of every tree or the garden. And the woman said, and the woman said unto the serpent. Now she talking, she having dialogue with Satan. We may eat of it, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now she care, she had carrying on a conversation with Satan. She was not afraid of him. So she carried on a conversation with Satan. Let me put a uh, let me put a stop sign right here for a moment. Let's let's pause for a moment. Now, a caution light. Let's pause for a moment, sisters. This is how this hypothetical. This is a setup how men do a lot of ladies now. They will come up to you and start talking, and whatever you said, they will try to flip it around to their advantage. What does the word deceive mean? It is defined as causing someone to believe something that is not true, typically in order to gain some type of personal advantage. A lot of worldly men, they they play this same playbook over and over again on a lot of sisters. I'm not basically, I'm not, we ain't even talking about worldly when we talk about some sisters. Remember, Eve was perfect and she was pure at one time. You sister that was saved, by the Lord Jesus, and you've been watching the blood of the Lamb, Satan has some songs that come up to you and be doing some crap talking, okay? I just threw that out there. But, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Now he putting doubt in the woman. That's how some of these guys do you sisters too. They will put doubt in your mind. You would be you was telling them something was straight and true, but they're gonna try to gaslight you and have you to view something from another point of view. And God does, and God does know in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Listen to what he said. You should be like God. That's what a lot of you, that's what a lot of worldly men do to a lot of you sisters. They be telling you you sexy. You gorgeous, so they gaslighting you. They pushing you up to make you feel good because they know if they talk to you, you're going to start feeling good and you may start feeling yourself. And then they they, they know if they could just put those kind of uh, okie dokes in front of you, more than likely you're going to be susceptible to it. Because what do, you see, men are attracted to women based by their appearance. Women are more attracted to men based on what they hear. They may see some stuff, but what they hear. So you got some smooth operator brothers out there, sons of Satan. Now, it said, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took all the fruit thereof and did eat and gave unto her husband, and he did eat. You see what she did? She ate it. Then she gave it to her husband. He knew better. Adam knew better. What did the Bible say? It said, 
in, in Timothy 2, it said, Timothy, 1 Timothy said, chapter 2, 11 through 14, it said, and this, this part said, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. You see, when she gave that to Adam, he knew better. He knew better. So what happened? It say, and, and the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they was naked and they sold fed leaves together and made them aprons. Why did they do that? That they, they lost their innocence. I know you all wait for me to get to the dickle part. I'm getting to it, but we're, we're getting to it. Hold on. And then they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Here come Jesus. That's who they encountered. His name was Jesus during that time, but he normally used to come down there in the cool of the day and walk with him and talk. So Jesus coming down from heaven and he and they heard him coming. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. You see, when the Lord came, they heard like wind, the sound of wind coming. You see, it was a certain sign that when the Lord was coming, so more than likely, it was like a strong wind or something coming. You know, like when somebody being introduced. So that introduced the Lord like a, I can imagine a strong wind coming. They knew that the Lord was right behind the wind. And then it said, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? God was not playing hide and go see with Adam. Eve. He knew where they was at. He already knew what had took place when he came. He already knew it. And then the Lord... It, and he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. When he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, do you all not realize that Jesus is called the word of God? He is called the word of God. The voice was Jesus himself. And I was and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Have thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded that thou shall not eat? Now, Instead of Adam taking responsibilities, he is going to not blame God and Eve. This is what Adam replied. He said, and the man said, the woman who thou gave to me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. So not only did he blame Eve, he blamed God. You see, Adam did not take responsibility and he was not accountable. He was trying to pass the blame on the God and Eve, God forgiven Eve, and now he was trying to play like he was tricked. Adam was not tricked. He just he just knew he had got in trouble, okay? And then God listened to what Adam said. And then this is what God did. And the Lord God, he, he said to the woman, what is this that thou have done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So which Eve was telling the truth. Adam was... Adam wasn't telling the truth. He was trying to hide. Adam was like throwing rocks and hiding his hand, but Eve told the truth. She said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did it. The serpent deceived Eve. She told the truth. And the Lord God said to the serpent, because thou have done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, above all the beasts, and all the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall not eat all the days of thy life. I will put empathy between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and, and thou shall bruise his heel. What I just read right then, this part, I will put empathy between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. What is this talking about? This is the first prophecy of Jesus coming and Jesus dying on the cross. When it said this poet, thou shall bruise, thou shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. You see, what's the most fatal blow? If you get hit from the head or the heel. You see, when Jesus, when Jesus was put on the cross, Satan thought he had won. So in a sense, Satan thought he was bruising Jesus' head, but Jesus is the head, right? So, but naturally, he did get, he he hit Jesus, 
by the bruising of the heel. It was temporary. But what he did not know was that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. This is talking about that event when Jesus came and he was on the cross. Satan thought he had won. That means that that should bruise his head with Jesus is the one that's going to bruise the head. If you notice then my brother and sister, what is the most fatal? If you step on somebody's head or you or you stomp them on the heel, it's the head. So Jesus stomped Satan on the head during the crucifixion when he, he and after he rose from the dead. Now, this is the critical part that I'm about to get to. It said, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. What are we talking about from the dinner table night? What caused the woman to have a more difficult time in life? And why her man should understand. It say, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy con uh, conception. In sorrow, thou shalt, excuse me, thou shalt bring forth children, and thou, des and thou desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. <clears throat> That's right, Sister Flo. Pain, suffering, misery. Now, there are three points that I'm going to make. Number one, when we go to Genesis uh, 3.16 again, it said to the woman, I will make thy pain and childbearing very severe. A lot of you women, y'all know what it's like to have children, don't you? What if you did not have an epidermis? What would happen? Sister Flo said, yeah, suffering misery. You see, the Lord, this is one of the punishment that he put on the woman. The difficult time started for the woman in Eden. Yes, he, he told the man about how he was going to have to work and he was going to have some hard work like he never did before. But God put a punishment on the woman too. And that's where the childbirth come in, sister, is when it all root back to Eve. It said, I will make that, that pain in childbearing very severe. You sisters know about it, those of you that had children. And then it said, with painful labor, you will give birth to children. And here go another part. It say, your desires will be to your husband. Whatever desires you got is going to your husband. That's what he's telling Eve right now. Whatever desire you got, bump that. Your desire go to your husband. And then he go a real blow to Eve and he will rule over you. That is part of the great punishment. Now let's break down childbearing. Let's break down desire and let's break down the rules. Okay, childbearing. Women are, in general, the ones that children or, or a child or children be mostly around. And in general, women are more understanding and nurturing than men are. It's just natural, brother. Children or a child are mostly around their mothers. That's why a child or children mostly gravitate to their mothers because they spend the most time around their mothers. After they're born, a child and a mother, they have a special link to one another. The woman carried the child. Let me tell you something, brothers. No matter what a child does when they come out, if a child go to the left or the right, most mothers gonna love their children anyway. Now there will be some daddy that say, "Look, I ain't got nothing to do with him." If he go too far to the left, the daddy may say, "I ain't got nothing to do with him." But with that woman, even if a child kills somebody, she's still gonna love her child. She's still not gonna want her child to go to jail because her child is innocent in her eye. Most of the time, children are gonna always be innocent in their mother's eyes. Because they 
they are more emotional and they're more attached to the children. Mothers and their children have that invisible ability, umbilical cord. Even if you cut the natural cord, they still had that invisible umbilical cord. That's why most of the time children, even if they got a good dad around, a lot of them lean more to the mothers. That doesn't mean that the mother is be be better than the father because some, some dad is that better than the mom. But children more, more frequently lean towards the mothers. They're not one man. And I know I'm not one of them. I don't even want to spend, I don't even want to spend one day trying to find out what it's like to have a baby. Not from what I hear. I just believe, I just say, okay, I don't want no part of that. Brother, there's not one of you, and especially me, that want to even sample what it's like to give birth to a child. Women are more stronger in some areas than men are. But naturally, if Eve would not have done what she did when she gave childbirth, she wouldn't have had that, that problem. You got to understand that. That's, you listen to what I say. If Eve would not have done what she did when she gave birth to her children, if she had not seen, she would not never experience pain. So that would pass down to women. Secondly, desire. Men in general are more abusive to women than women are to men, especially worldly men. I'm going to say that again. Desire. Men are more abusive to women than women are to men, especially a worldly man. Now, there are some worldly men that take the Bible, manipulate it, bend it, towards themselves a lot a lot of men they know the part about your desire would be to your husband and so some men take it like i don't care what you say or what you do you do what i say even jesus doesn't do that jesus gives you an option worldly men don't give you option worldly men give you ultimatums Jesus and godly men give you options. Worldly men give you ultimatum. A godly man, he understands the, the desire of a woman. He understands we are partners together. We're in this together. It's not no me, myself, and I. It's a we, us, and our. Godly men are not narcissists. They're not narcissists. Even though they know their role in the relationship, they are. They know that they're the head of the relationship, but godly men, they will still listen to their woman as long as it doesn't violate the, wor the word of God. Worldly men, they listen, but they don't listen because worldly men think that women in general are stupid. They think that women are slow. If you... If you were able to listen to some conversation, what some men say about women, and I'm talking about some men, I'm talking about worldly men. I'm not talking about godly men. I'm talking about worldly men. There are more worldly men than godly men. And they pass this stuff on doing barber shops and all that kind of stuff. If some of you women really knew how worldly men think about women, you know what worldly men basically think about women. This is what they think about women. I don't care what I don't care what they got a PhD. They still ain't got no sense. They don't see things like I see it. They need to see things like I see it. What these words mean to understand? Women are made different from men. Men are unanalytical. Women aren't. They more emotional driven. With what really men do not understand. So they're saying they ain't they ain't got no sense, even though they got a PhD. They don't know what they're doing. They cause a whole bunch of confusion. The only thing a woman is good for, according to a worldly man, is to stay in the house, cook the food, clean the house, take care of the children, make sure I get that big piece of the chicken, make sure you could do double monkey backflips in the bedroom, and shut up 
because I don't want to hear it. That's how a lot of worldly men think of women. Even though that do not follow the Lord, they may treat women good, but a lot of them think that way, but they think about it on the, on the low low, but they're not going to verbally tell you that. If you just hear what your man be talking about, especially you, he, he's going to be in Christ or not. If he's not in Christ, he have these thoughts that I just told you about. So a lot of men in general think that women can't do nothing. Women are subordinate. They need to stay at home. They don't know nothing what they're doing. But God specifically created the woman for the man. Just think about this. Some of you guys out there that's going to be getting that's getting angry at me right now. Some of you guys, not my brothers, I know they ain't getting angry. But what what would you do without a woman? What would you do without a woman? I tell you what you'll do. You'll do what they do mostly in prison. You'll be going after other men. That's what you would do without a woman. You'll be going after other men. Now, there are some men, they'll say, uh, men, women can't do nothing. They can't build. They can't do nothing. Do you ever see a woman building a building? Do you ever see a woman doing this and that? A lot of times, let me tell you this story. I don't know quite, I know you all seen this movie, right? You remember when that first spaceship went to space? You remember that? It was three black women that were instrumental into getting that spacecraft up to the moon and especially coming back into uh, the Earth atmosphere. It was three black sisters. Y'all look at that movie. Do some research. If it wasn't for those three black women, that that spaceship possibly would not have gone to the moon and especially came back into the atmosphere. These were women. Men, it was some men, bright men at NASA. They could not figure it out. Women in general, they they have some desire, but their desires are different from men. Let's look at it from a kingship standpoint. A lot of men like to say they're kings. A lot of women like to say they're queens. Who run? Okay, let's look at it realistically. Yeah, a, a sister of purpose for passion. Say, I believe the move was called fear because I believe that what it is. But called to Roger P. Henson was on there, and that lady named Olivia something. I forgot it was it was three uh black sisters that was on that move. But y'all y'all need to check that move out. If it weren't for these three women, it wouldn't have been no successful Apollo going up to the moon and especially coming back. These ladies were brilliant. Guess what? God put that knowledge into those women. He didn't put it in no man. He put it in a woman. So how can men, worldly men, think women aren't, aren't uh, good enough to do things? Speaking of a kingship and desire, if a king marry a queen, the king called, the king had the final say so over everything. But what a wise king would do, he would listen to his queen. She's not running everything. He will listen to her. A queen is the king's most trusted advisor. Women got something that we men don't have. They got those emotions and they can feel things. And I always say this, brother, if you're married and you a businessman, and it comes to signing a contract. Listen to me carefully, brother. I know you went to Harvard and Yale and all that kind of stuff. And you think you need to sign that contract. You need to leave your wife at home. I'm, I'm encouraging you, brother. Listen to what I'm about to say. Take your wife with you. Take your wife with you, brothers. Take your wife with you. Why am I saying that? Am I telling you to take your wife so 
she can influence other men how she look and stuff no i'm not talking about that women can feel things that we men could miss out on what am i talking about like you go brother you about to sign this big contract i have said it before you about to sign this big contract right for those of you that wonder what i'm drinking this water okay ain't no wine or nothing you take this your your wife or if you engage take her with you you sit there even though you got to sign the contract sit, take her in you introduce her to these guys or ladies that you about to sign this contract with okay you take her in the deal seem to be good you look over the deal as we know contracts you make a sign a contract but some people still won't even honor a contract listen to what i'm saying just because you sign a contract some people still won't even honor the contract before you sign the contract that's why i say take your woman with you especially if she is a godly woman that's the key just because you marry a woman she needs to be a godly woman she needs to be a proverb 31 woman you need to desire to take that woman with you so when you take her with you because you got to understand when you have a godly woman remember what in genesis 3 16 part of it say your desire would be to your husband so if you got a good woman her desires is going to be for the betterment of you brothers you understand if you got a golden woman she's going to desire for you to be successful she's going to be your number one cheerleader she's going to be there to comfort you those people that's going to be in front of you they're not going to be your cheerleaders they're not going to comfort you they're not going to listen to your ups and downs you see brother when you have a good woman you know what this tell sister this tell you whether you're a good woman to the man when he shares some deep hope and dream and it ain't got to be no pillow talk when he share his hopes and dreams and disappointment his in depth with you when a man share all his a lot of his core with you that man loves you listen to what i'm saying if a man really share his soul with you his deep thoughts with you that man loves you because most men gonna hold back because in general men don't trust women and vice versa women don't trust men but more so men don't trust women in general they don't and that's out there don't trust women now don't trust now you see what they don't understand you if you marry the right woman you can have a high level of trust for her. but you see the all the trust go to the lord but you should be with a woman brother that you have a high level of trust for okay not put on a pedestal but you can't honor her so back to the business table if that woman say if she bend over to you and say um don't sign that contract and then you may look at her like this and then you tell them in front of you uh let me go outside and talk to my wife right quick y'all go out there and then you say why you don't want me to sign the contract she said it's something about that man or those women in there they they wrong listen to her because what you don't understand brother if you got a godly woman god could have spoken to that woman to tell you something god don't only talk to you brother he could talk to your wife you may be a godly man don't you know brother that god talked to you through different people and in circumstances in life that woman god could talk to that woman let me give you a good example of talk to the woman when abraham first listened to sarah to go lay with hagar he messed up he messed up he shouldn't have listened to hagar he should have been patient for the lord so he could have isaac but they call themselves trying to help god because remember god said that Sarah and abraham were going to have that promised child right when he first told them 25 years went by so in 25 years you know Sarah and abraham they got patient i mean impatient and you know that people will probably talk about 
they talk about their guards say they're gonna have some children look at oh they are old rusty he can't do nothing look at him walk around limping look at her with her old sagging self that's what you know how the community probably do it 25 years went by but say was still had isaac but in the meantime hagar she got the big head because she had uh ishmael first right so she had the big head so she started messing with sarah and then when sarah had uh isaac isaac big brother used to pick at him so sarah told abraham you need you need to that's your problem but but it really wasn't abraham problem it was sarah and abraham problem and abraham told Sarah, you that's your servant you do with her what you want to do so sarah she would watch she it was she was sending up the kick hey go out but you know what god told uh abraham he said listen to your wife god told abraham listen to your wife because you see the the bible clearly say that uh hagar's son was from a bonds person but abraham real see uh isaac was the promised uh one so they weren't going to be together that's why my brother and sister today over in the middle east over there they, they, that's why they having problem over the land because of the descendants of ishmael and isaac you have the arabs saying that's their land you have the israelites saying it's day land the israelites saying abraham is our father the the arab saying that abraham our father both of them are right abraham did have uh ishmael that was his that was his oldest son but he wasn't a promised son isaac was a promised son so both of them do claim abraham but only one was the promised seed and that was isaac that's why they had that a whole bunch of mess over in the middle east you know why a lot of oil and everything is over there you know the the arrows they big on the oil and all that kind of stuff right and look at the israelite you know why because all of them are descendants from abraham and they're going to continue to fight until jesus come back they're going to always be clashing but the point is sarah had a um if you have a good wife brother her desires going to go to you if it's a rebellious woman she's going to kick against you anyway her desire don't want to be with you why the lord said your desire would be to your husband because he knew that if he knew that adam did what she told him to do from the get-go right when she told Adam, hey, taste this, he did it, right? But now God is specifically letting uh, Adam and Eve know, because I'm sure Adam heard what he was telling her, your desire would be to your home. That means Adam, grow up, be a man, and don't let your wife tell you what to do, especially if it's going to interfere with what I'm telling you. The worldly women, these very aggressive women, they like to tell me what to do. That's why a lot of these worldly women, they, they can't find no man. And I said it right, they can't find no man because no man is not going to find them, not no godly man. That's why a lot of women out there, they successful according to the world standards. But, they, but no man have found them because they're rebellious they don't understand that if they get married to a man their desire is supposed to go to the that purpose that god gave the man that's why they have to marry a man that got purpose like i had told you all i, I believe a night ago i talked to this sister and she said what turned a lot of women off a lot of men that they talk to they ain't got no purpose in life and a lot of these women they looking for them, they they desire a man that have purpose in his life so they could follow them. Godly women want to follow a godly man. Worthy woman want a man to follow her. 
and her desires to put her desire first. That's not the order God put in it. Now, see, rule. Most worldly men take advantage of this part, the rule part. Again, in Genesis 3, 16, as it is written, to the woman, he said, I will make your pain and childbearing very severe. Painful labor, you will give birth to your children. Your desire will be and he will rule over you. That means that a woman has to be submissive to her husband. Now, that's a bad word, submissive. To most women, the word submissive is an evil word. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's not really. In the order of God, in the scheme of things, is go back to how you doing, sister lady, uh, Chantilla. In the scheme of things, remember the order. It say that the woman, I mean, that God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man and the woman is the head. I mean, let me go back. God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man and man is the head of the woman. That's what the good book say, okay? Now, with the good book saying, and then going back to uh, Eden, when God told Eve this part, he will rule over you. A lot of worldly men take advantage of this. You see, you rule two ways. If a man, if a man, let's say a man is quote unquote a king, you have a good king and you have an evil king. The evil king represent a worldly man. A godly king re represents a spiritual man. Now, when it comes to rule, worldly men, they want to beat down women with, I'm the man, I rule things, I run things, you do what I say. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Even the Lord give us a free will. He will lay out things, but he still give us what is called a free will. Worldly men, they don't, they don't think a woman has free will. They demand women to do that because they think that men are up here and women are dying here. A godly man know that a godly woman is not over him or right there, but they know a godly woman is right by him. And a godly man, when it comes to rule, he know how to talk to her not in a demanding or a dictatorship way. He talks to her. And more than likely, she responds. There was this sister that I talked to today, and she said something very well. You know what she said? She say, how you doing, Sister Shell? Welcome to the dinner table, too. She say, when I talk to my husband, if he call me, I never say what to him. She said, when he, when he talks to me, I always say yes. If he call my name, I just say yes. I never say what. She said, like I always tell you, uh, brother, especially sister, I say men look at love and respect. And she made a good point when she said she talked to her husband. He talked to her. She always say if he wherever she at, like if she in another room, if he called, let's say her name Betty. Betty, yes. That's how a godly woman would answer. Yes, cause she's acknowledging him. Okay, a worldly woman, Betty. What you want? What? You see the difference on saying what or what you want instead of saying yes? They're not saying she agree with him. She just acknowledging him. That's how men um, take love as respect. And worldly men, they abuse the, the rule part of Genesis 3.16 where it said he will rule over you. That's why a lot of women have problems with it because worldly men have abused it, twisted to their benefits. Godly men don't do not do that. Godly men, first of all, God, they wait for um, God to bring them the woman in their life. They're not saying God's going to bring a woman to his house. No, in the circumstance of life, he would bring that woman, a good woman, a godly woman, a woman that's already prepared to be wife. When God brings a woman into a man's life, she already wife ready. She's not learning to be a wife. She's wife ready. Now, she, it's some, going to be some skill that she may learn, but she's going to be wife ready. Sister Lady Chantel said, 
I made a mistake of being in a relationship with a man that wasn't on his purpose and still live at home. I was move, moving forward into my own home and wanted to be married. I understand that, sister. You're not the only one, sister. You know what, sister or lady Chantelle? He began to break me down like a worldly man. Yep, you were able. But the thing about it, sister, lady Chantelle, you were able to see the red flags, sister. I'm glad you was able to see the red flags. Again, what caused women to have a more difficult time in life and why her man must understand? It all goes back to that incident that happened in the Garden of Eden. It all goes back to that. If you all want to know what happened, go back to the Garden of Eden. When Eve did what she did and Adam did what she, he did. That's what you have to understand, my brother, my sister. And it passed down to generation to generation and a generation. But God had to have a remedy for it. When God sent his son Jesus in, Jesus clarified a whole bunch of things that was confusing. And not only that, when Jesus went back to heaven, he had he had this one on one with Paul, and you are familiar with Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. He was not part of the original twelve. As a matter of fact, Paul thought that Jesus was an imposter until he had an encounter with Jesus on the Damascus Road. So I want you, brother and sister, to know this: Apostle Paul was the last apostle. I know you all hear about apostles right now. They are fake. When you read God's word, even you can Google it. Paul said he was the last to be called. And I'm paraphrasing. Paul tell you I was the last. In order to be an apostle, my brother and sister, you have had to see Jesus with your eyes. All these apostles that walk around here, they ain't seen Jesus. None of them. Apostle Paul, he had to go and get specialized training with Jesus for three years in Arabia. Paul spent three years of direct contact with the risen Lord. After he had uh, died, rose again, and went to heaven. Jesus gave Paul revelation for three years before Paul, before Paul mingled with Peter and the rest of them. Paul said that he was the apostle of the Gentile. A Gentile is anyone that is not a Jew. Any other man that come talk about their apostle, my brother, since you need to listen to your brother Tony, they are liars. The last apostle was Paul. The last part of the Bible, that was it. Even though apostle uh, John wrote Revelation, and John wrote Revelation to the seven churches that was in Asia. And I'm not talking about buildings. I'm talking about communities, areas, cities. That's what I'm talking about. It was not talking about no church building. In the New Testament, we're not living up under the Old Testament, brothers and sisters. We're living up under grace. We're not living up under the law. The law was given to the Jews, not the Gentile. It was given through Moses to the Israelites. When Paul came along, his name used to be Saul, but his name got changed. To Paul, if you really want to know how relationships are supposed to go, my brother and sister, look, read what Paul writings, and then look at a little Peter writing. Because Peter did address some things about a woman and a man. When we go back to 1 Peter 3, 7, he said, Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, 
giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel and being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayer be not hindered. What caused the woman to have more difficult in life? It was what the decision Eve made. And it filtered down. And you know what? When God told Eve, when God told Eve these things, I will make your, your pain in childbirth very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be to your husband and he will rule over you. Right now, God came up with a way through man with this thing called the epidermal, but you're going to still feel a little pressure before you get that epidermal, right? Then your desire would be to your husband. In order for a woman's desire to be for a husband, she got to be with a man that has purpose in life. Sister, if you get with a man that got a purpose in life, you already missed the boat. And you want to be with someone that got purpose in life. If you if a man doesn't have purpose in life, how can he rule over you? And brother, if you're going to rule over a woman, are you together? Excuse me, are you together? You got to be together and not living with your mama. You got to be together and not living with somebody else. You got to be able to maintain a home. You got to be able to bring leadership in, guidance in wisdom in being able to take care of a woman and children the bible clearly say that a man that doesn't work doesn't eat it also say a, a man that doesn't take care of his household his household is worse than an infidel what is an infidel unbeliever even you got some unbeliever men that believe in taking care of their home but the bible said a believing man that don't take care of his home and family stuff that is the one of the worst type of man men that a woman could get involved with. <coughs> Excuse me. So, sisters, you can make life easier for yourself by waiting for God to call the right man to find you. You're gonna have tribulations in life, sisters, but wait till God bring call the right man to find you. Don't lower your standards. Don't let the, the world tell you it's more men than women. You see, when the world and men tell you it's more men than women, the, the thing is they're trying to get you women, your sisters, to lower your, your standards. <laughs> Don't lower your standards. Because God always has the right man for the right woman. He always does. God can make a small thing out of and he can make it lord for example when jesus fed those uh those five thousand men and women and children it could have been about ten thousand he took he started with a few fish and a few bread right the same principle sister the lord could do that with you if he could if he could feed all those people don't you know lord could call the right man to find you and this brother, that's what you need to know. Women have it hard. I know you brother, you have it hard. Yes, you have it hard. Women have it harder. They have it harder. That's why the Bible say you have to deal with them from understanding. You have to deal with that woman that God placed in your, your, your life with understanding. You have to. If you don't have understanding, if you don't have empathy for a woman, you need to leave her alone. You see, brother, you have to have the ability to know how to feel. The only way you're going to have the ability to feel from a woman's point of view, that's not saying you soft. You got to have a relationship with the Lord. Even though the Lord was man, man of all men, he showed what is called compassion. He had empathy. He was able to, to feel what other people feel. So, brother, when you have a woman in your life, you got to be able to feel what she's feeling. And the only way you're going to feel what she's feeling, 
you got to have Lord in your life. If you don't have the Lord in your life, you don't understand. Cause the only thing you can say, I don't understand how you feel. I'm trying to get there. If you have the Lord, you will get there. Because the Lord make you one, brother. He make you one, sister. But brother, you have to understand your woman. You have to understand your woman, brother, to the point where just like the Lord know the numbers of hairs on your head. You got to learn your woman to that degree to learn the numbers of hair on her head. And I'm using that in a physically way, okay? So you got to, that means you got to learn and learn and learn. You got to learn what your woman like when she don't even say nothing. You got to pick up on how she look, when how she look at certain things. You see, you ain't got to wait till she say things. Just look at her. You have to learn her. When she, you could tell when she's not feeling well without her saying anything. You could tell when she's happy without saying anything. That's how well you got to learn your woman. If you don't love your woman, you won't try to get to learn her. You see, when you be in a relationship, brother, with a woman, every day you it's a new day. You never been to that day before. It's a new day with the Lord and a new day with that woman that God put in your life. If the Lord put her in your life, it's a new day. You got to treat her like she is a gift every day. Because when God brings the right woman to your life, brother, she is a gift. What the Bible say? A man that finds for good, uh, a, a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. The favor you got is what's called grace. You did not do nothing to earn her. You did not do nothing special for God to bring the right woman in your life. So there are no man that can boast that he had a, a good talk game and stuff. Uh-uh. God did all the lead work when he bring the right woman. God the one who bring it, brother. So if you got a good woman, if you engage to a good woman, if you consider marrying a woman, if you get married to a woman, you got to give God credit, brothers. And what you got to do, you got to give God credit for the woman, not you. I love you, brothers. I love you, sisters. Now we're at the Q&A the Q section before we leave. Is there anything, brothers, if there anything, sisters, that you want to, if there are a question, just put wait down there and get ready to put your question in, okay? If there's a comment, put wait and then bring your comment. It's open time at the dinner table. Is there anything, brothers and sisters, that you want to say at this time or a question that you need to ask? Just put wait down there and go ahead and state your position. And we can address it right now because we family here. You don't have to feel like whatever you have to say don't make no sense. You ain't got to think about this. People gonna think I'm crazy or don't have no intellect and all that. Don't even throw it out at us when we family here. Lady Chantel, she said, wait. So we're gonna wait for Lady Chantel to ask a question or make a comment and we going to address it as a family okay that's what we're going to do we're going to address it as a family she's she will soon be um asking a question or making a comment if any of you other brothers sister if you got a comment or you got a question bring it to the dinner table we family here and open up and we we'll address it there's nothing that's crazy there's nothing that's stupid. Whatever you have to say, somebody else may have wanted to ask or wanted to say. So don't feel like you're not important. Every man and every woman that's at the dinner table, you all are important to God, and you're definitely important to me too. Brothers and sisters, you're important to me. So whatever you want to share, you can share it right now, brothers. <laughs> You can see it right now, sisters, but we'll wait for Lady Chantel to tell us whatever. Lady Chantel said, how do you get over a worldly man telling you that you are not his wife? I just realized he was a worldly man after the breakup. Okay. 
Tell me this, sister or lady Chantel, were you married to this man? Were you married to him before y'all broke up? Yes, and yes, you were married to him, or no, you were not. That's what I need to know before I answer. Okay, you was engaged to him. All right. If you was engaged to him and he was a worldly man, he did you a favor. He really did, sister. He did you a favor by moving on. Because let me tell you, sister, based on what you just saying right now, if you would have got with a worldly man and you was engaged to him, you saved yourself a, low, a whole bunch of unwasted time you save yourself tears agony and all the stuff that goes with it he actually done your fail you know what and like i always say a lot of time when a person leave you brother and sister if a person ever leave you you may be hurting right then but what i say god always have a ram in the bush for you brothers and sisters and when God calls that, that person to come into your life, you're going to be able to look back and those bad relationships that you had in the past, you're going to thank God that they came to an end. And this is what you're going to ask yourself. What did I see in him? And what did I see in her? That's what you're going to be asking yourself when God bring the right person to your life. So believe me, my brother and sister, when a lot of people when they want to ghost you and leave you alone i don't want to communicate with you they doing your favor as a matter of fact god could be trying to push that person out of your life don't hold on to them if they want to go let them go don't hold on i understand lady chantel because i was in a relationship years ago and i didn't want to let go i didn't want to let go so i can identify i was walking down that valley before I was walking that valley, so I understand. But when I let go, it hurt it for a while. But guess what? As time went on, and without me know, then I started noticing I wasn't thinking about her as much as I used to. I wasn't. I I started thinking I I'm feeling better. A whole bunch of stuff I look back and I said, I'm glad. And let me tell you this, my brother and sister, I must say this at this time. That laid up down a picture with me. That's the best woman. The best woman. And I'm not putting her up on no pedestal, but that's the best woman that I have ever been in a relationship with. I'm not talking about just dating or seeing someone. I talk about actually a relationship when I say I'm serious, when I say I'm committed, and then I say I do. That's what I talk about, a relationship. When I say I'm serious, I committed, and I say I do. How you doing, Sister Cynthia? Um, welcome to the dinner table. So, brothers and sisters, you going to be able to do like I did. I walked down the valley. Let Sister Chantel was talking about, I walked down that valley. If you walking down the valley, my brother and sister, with the wrong person, Guess what? There's a mountaintop. And guess what's on that mountaintop? There's a bush. And guess what? And I'm not talking about George Bush. There's a bush. And there's a ram that's stuck in that bush. That's the substitute. That's the better substitute. And when you're on the and when you're on the mountain with that substitute, you're gonna look down in that valley. And that person that you've been dealing with for years, months, a day, you're gonna <coughs> you're gonna look down there and they still doing the same thing, the same game. And let me tell you this, my brother and sister, a lot of those people, when you get when the God bring the right person, they're gonna envy you. They're gonna envy you, they're gonna be jealous of you, they're probably gonna start talking about you and throwing shades about you. They're gonna make it seem like you were the bad person. You weren't a bad person. They just did not see, brother, that you was a son of God. Sister, they did not see that you was a daughter of God. So let them go. When a person don't want to be in your life, let them go. I'm telling you, I'm a witness. 
brother, there's other women out there. When I say other women, godly women, let these women go, these worldly women. That that you see, brother, when you're with the right woman, guess what you're gonna get? Peace. Sister, when you're with the right man, get what you're gonna get. Peace. When you're in a relationship where there's a lot of confusion, God is not there. Because what the Bible said, God is not the author of confusion, but peace. A good indicator that you with someone, my brother and sister, when you have peace. And you don't have to be in the Middle East to have peace. You have peace. Remember, brother and sister, you have peace. And when God brings the right person, you're going to have some storms, but overall, you're going to have a lot of sunshiny days. The purpose of those storms is to help you to grow. But if you have a storm, it better be in a storm with a Christian than with a worldly person. If you want to really grow, get with an imperfect per, uh, godly man or woman. He or she got a little baggage. You got some baggage. Y'all get together and talk one another baggage. But have the Lord to uh, be the captain of your ship, the relationship. If there are any other questions or comments you want to make, my brother and sister, you need to put down that wait now and make your comment or ask the question before we part for the night. Is there anybody else that need to say anything at the dinner table? If you don't have nothing to say at the dinner table by putting the word wait, it's time for us to depart. You, you welcome, Lady Shante. Shante, you ready? We about to get ready to go, my brother and sister. So, uh, purpose uh, for passion said, what do you do in a situation that's toxic? And the man has indicated that he didn't love you. He just tolerates you, but he doesn't want to leave you alone. Let him go. Let him go because it's something that he, he, he wants from you or still getting from you. That's why he don't want to let you go. A lot of times, men and women, when they, especially this, listen to the, this is a key part, my brother and sister. When a man or woman want to leave you, and then they say something like, we can still be friends. We can still be friends. Uh-uh, they just want to have, they still want to have a tie to you. If they don't want to, let them go. Let them go. If they say they want to tolerate you, he's, he's purposely trying to hurt you. He's doing this on purpose. That's all he's doing. Let him go. Let him go. And the, de the best thing to do, let him go with kindness. You ain't got to be nasty. But what I tell you, it's called no contact. It's called no contact. Stop calling him. If you think you're going to pick up that, that phone and call him, delete his number. Go ahead and delete his number. Delete his email address. Delete everything that you know of that you can get in contact with. Because you don't, you're going to, you're going to get in a moment of weakness. You're going to call him. In a moment of weakness, you're going to text him. In a moment of weakness, you're going to email him. It's called no contact. It's hard to do the no contact. I'm telling you, it's very hard to do the no contact. But as time go on, it's going to get easier. Let me tell you something, my brother and sister. Silence have power. <sighs> Silence have power. Listen to me again, my brother and sister. Silence have power. You don't need no explanation. You do not need no closures. I, I, you know what? Some of you sister, you all be looking for closures in relationship. Don't look for no closure. It is what it is. Some of you brother, y'all be looking for closure too. It is what it is. You don't need no closure. Just move on. Like the floater used to say years ago, float, float on, float on. Leave that man, that toxic man or that toxic woman alone and live your life. Like Jill Scott said, living my best life. You all remember that song by Jill Scott, living you my best life. Listen to that song by Jill, Li living my best life. Now, then it was what well, then it's a song, my golden life, or something like that. It's a song, something like that. Purpose for passion said, What if you live underneath the same roof? If you live up on the same roof, first of all, are you married? 
Are you married? Let's let's put it out there. Are you married or are you not? <laughs> yes or no. Are you married? Then we could once you let me know what position in, then it's easy for us to talk. Are you are the, are you married or are you not? Yes or no? Then I could tell you what to do. Okay, we are not. If you're not, if you're not married, you are what is called a free agent. You, what you do, it's gonna be hard. If you have to go, go. Start getting yourself together and get ready to go. If you don't, it's gonna get worse. The only time, the only way a person could change the Lord Jesus got to be in that man or woman life. Call the first thing, sister. Uh, purpose for passion let me tell you this i used to live with a lady and i wasn't married i'm not talking about cinderella because when cinderella and i got married i told her we got to get married before we live together i learned i have done that before and it didn't work now some people they live together and they get married but it's wrong in general i did wrong so sister uh purpose uh for passion you doing wrong. Your brother Tony did it wrong, but I started doing it right. I started doing it God's way. When I started doing it God's way, he put me on the mountaintop. I went in the valley no more. And God will put you on the mountaintop too. He ain't no help you. He didn't help me. When I was living that kind of way, God did not help me because I wasn't doing it his way. God is going to only help you, sister and brother, when you do it his way. God will let a man or woman hurt you, brother and sister. If you're not doing it his way, he is not going to protect you. He's going to let you hurt. He's going to let you keep hurting and hurting and hurting because you're the prodigal son and the daughter. You're going to end up in the pig pen like your brother Tony did. I, I was that prodigal son. I was in the pig pen. I was dirty. I was down. And then I had to come to myself. I had to come to myself. I had to shake my head like that. And I had to say, I got to go back home. And the home was being with the Lord. I had to go back to the Lord, like the prodigal son. And when I went back to the Lord, even though I had those dirty rags and stuff on, which represents sin, I had all those dirty rags and stuff. The Lord saw me. He ran out and met me like he would meet you, brothers and sisters, the prodigal son and daughter. He will meet you. He would take those raggedy uh, sins off of you. He will wash you up and he will have a big banquet for you. You once were law, but now you found. That's how it is, my brother and sister. So don't feel ashamed. Just get to, you know, just you have to make a decision. Do I hurt more? Do I hurt now and when I hurt more? Or do I want to hurt less by moving on? You see, when you move on, brothers and sisters, it's going to hurt because you got what is called an unhealthy soul tie. It's going to hurt, but it will get better when you go to no contact. It's going to be hard. Now, I ain't lying. It's going to be hard. But as days go by, it's going to get better and better and better. And when God bring that right person like I ain't lying, brother and sister, you're going to look down in the valley and you can say, what did I see in him or her? You brother and sister, I hope that you all have a good night. And Lord willing, we'll we'll come back tomorrow night, hopefully. So stay tuned, okay? I love you, brother. I love you, sister. And make sure you take one of these care out plates with you and share with some more brothers and sisters. Tell them about the dinner table so they could come because we have plenty of room at the dinner table so they could sit down and enjoy this food for the soul. I love you, brothers. I love you, sister. You all have a good night. Peace out.